If you do a quick search on the internet right now about the best microphone to use for videos like the one you're watching where there's somebody in front of the camera talking to the camera, you'll find a bunch of videos about shotgun mics, about large diaphragm condenser mics, and about dynamic microphones. Now in all of those categories, there are multiple microphones that you can buy, but none of those categories are even what I would suggest as the best microphone to use. The audio that you've been hearing is actually a very inexpensive pencil condenser microphone that you may have heard of. These microphones are usually used for overhead drums, for miking acoustic guitars, miking choirs, and that kind of thing. That is the Samsung CO2. While this video is not sponsored, Samsung did send me this set of microphones, and I said set of microphones because they actually come in a set of two matched microphones so that you can do stereo recording. It comes with the Wind Furry, it comes with a shock mount, and it comes in a nice little handheld case. Now this video is gonna be more of a comparison of pencil condenser microphones to shotgun microphones. We are gonna be testing some directionality later in this video and how it performs in a treated space, but it's not gonna go into details on, say, like the noise floor and more technical details of the Samsung CO2. If you wanna see a video like that, Curtis Judd did a fantastic job of reviewing the Samsung CO2, and I would suggest that you go watch his video. I'll link it down in the description. But let's get into some examples of the Samsung CO2 versus the Rode VideoMic NTG and the newest shotgun mic from Godox. She had blue skin and so did he. He kept it hid and so did she. They searched for blue their whole life through, then passed right by and never knew. She had blue skin and so did he. He kept it hid and so did she. They searched for blue their whole life through, then passed right by and never knew. She had blue skin, and so did he. He kept it hid, and so did she. They searched for blue their whole life through, then passed right by, and never knew. All right, now I'm in my friend Vinny Beat's studio. I'm in the control room right now, and this room is probably the most dead room that I've been in since I've worked at a radio station a long time ago. This is gonna be the most sound-treated space that you'll hear this microphone in from this video. And as you can tell, it's probably a lot tighter sounding. You probably hear a lot more bass out of my voice. Well, I don't actually know about that because I haven't heard this mic in this situation yet. Um, when I get back to the studio, I'll give you my opinions on how this mic sounds compared to everything else. Until then, let's listen to some audio samples with those same mics that I used at the other space. She had blue skin and so did he. He kept it hid and so did she. They searched for blue their whole life through then passed right by and never knew. She had blue skin and so did he. He kept it hid and so did she. They searched for blue their whole life through, then passed right by and never knew. She had blue skin and so did he. He kept it hid and so did she. They searched for blue their whole life through, then passed right by and never knew. And for the last thing that I wanted to do while I'm here in this studio is do a plosive and a directionality test. So the first thing is to do a plosive test. And for the record, I know this is not how you would normally use one of these microphones, but just for posterity's sake, posterity, that's a good one. Posterity, posterity, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And for directionality, right now it's pointed directly at my mouth. Now it is about 45 degrees from my mouth. Now it is 90 degrees from my mouth. Now 135-ish degrees from my mouth. And now I'm talking directly behind the microphone. All right, so what did we learn? We learned number one, that filming in a treated space is much, much better than filming in an untreated space, no matter what microphone you're using. Number two, we learned that using the proper gear is better than using better gear. The shotgun microphones that you heard were about $250 to $300. I think the Godox microphone just got a price reduction down to about $200. But you can buy two Samsung CO2s for about $140, sometimes less. That's not a lot of money per microphone. So why don't more people use pencil condenser microphones for videos like this? The answer is simple. Number one, I think it's not as popular. Number two, pencil condenser mics 
generally don't come with a 3.5 millimeter jack to plug straight into the camera. The Samsung CO2 has an XLR output on it and it requires phantom power. There's no battery. You're gonna need something like an audio field recorder or you're gonna need to plug it into an audio interface into your computer in order to record with this microphone. Or alternatively, you could get a camera that has XLR inputs on it like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. I'm using the C70 right now or the FX6 from Sony. They just came out with another camera that I think that also uses that top mount that you can add on XLRs to it. Those are all viable options to use a microphone microphone like this and it makes buying something like that a little bit more feasible knowing that you'll be able to save some money buying quality microphones for those systems. I wouldn't be surprised if in the future manufacturers started coming out with pencil condenser mics that have a battery with all the features that these new shotgun mics have and that you can plug straight into your camera because of stuff like this. Pencil condenser mics are definitely a better choice for filming indoors, even in treated spaces. I feel like the audio I heard at the treated studio was better with the Samsung CO2 than with the Rode VideoMic NTG or with Godox's shotgun mic, which is kind of surprising to me. I wasn't really expecting that, but it does bring up another question, which is what would it sound like in this space, untreated, if I got a better pencil condenser mic. If there are any microphone manufacturers that wanna send me one of those microphones to try out in this space, I would be interested in doing that video. Until then, I gotta treat this space. Ugh. That's just the bottom line, gotta do it. I'll see you guys in the next video, peace.